Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today. Warm blood trickles down your armpit. The ligature is off. It's nothing. The ligature is off. I... I think it means the bandage is shifting. The little birch from the coin-operated viewer, still holding on. It's the tree over here. No way to get up there. The stairs are gone. Well, the... I don't need to get up there. It's... It's that. Have we heard this... Have we heard of this soundtrack before? I think we have. At least part of it. So we are in the little islet. Or island, depending on what the game wants to call it. And the soundtrack ran away. Ran away, for sure. This was once an armament nest. Twin cannons were attached here. Medium distance, large caliber. I don't think we can go through here. Careful, these stairs have collapsed. Well, there's something here, though. And nobody around here. An old cylindrical generator is nested above the ammo lift, with makeshift electrical wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall to your right. The lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel, checking for warmth. It's cold now, he concludes, but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Where do these wires l lead? He looks at the wall socket downstairs somewhere. What kind of generator is it? Liquid carbon. I would imagine it takes mazout. He points to the open fuel cap on the side of the dynamo. or dynamo. The kind that's favored by vagrants and fueled thieves. It's been a long winter, long and cold. Liquid carbon. That is a really interesting thing. Because I think it's like carbon... Do you call it, is it carbon? The, the, you know, the, that you make the barbecues with. Do you use carbon? Is that what it, what it's called? That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right at all. <laughs> the, um, uh, no, it's not. It's, it's, uh, coal. It's liquid coal. I think that's what it means. I, I mean, the problem is, I imagine some languages, in some languages, the word for carbon and for coal are the same. Because they are in Portuguese. Um, actually, that's not true. But um, but in this context, it is. We just have two words for carbon, depending on what um, what, what context it is. I guess it, you just call it coal to, you know, the... No, yeah, I suppose it works the same in English. It's a mistranslation. Because, you know, you, you, you call it, uh, like, the, the, the ashes of... of um, the ashes of a bonfire, for example, they call it the coals of a bonfire, but that's not what the, that's not the same kind of coal that uh, you make uh, that you make a barbecue with, because it's not burned the same way. Basically, the it, need, it needs to, it needs to be and it, but what is it called? Hmm, anaerobic burning is that what it is? You need to burn wood in a different way, in a specific way. I think it is anaerobic burning. Um, you you burn the wood without air, basically, and um, it, it just doesn't, it, it, it gets, it, you make coal out of it. So I think this is what he mean, means by that. If anyone stayed here, they'd need a generator. Tap on the side. A hollow ring. The canister is empty. Dust falls from the generator and down into the ammo lift. What does it mean, though, a generator here? I don't know. I am not a philosopher. I meant, why is it here? Someone with basic electrical skills has restored it with, uh, in order to keep the, the room warm. Maybe it's the fire guy. The wind outside picks up suddenly with a faint howl. Inside, it's warm. I'm gonna pour fuel into the tank. The lieutenant assists you, holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown viscous fluid pours out and the room fills with a chemical smell. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. It's not a starter switch. It's a fuel... What would that be for, actually? 
for the fuel pump? It's probably a fuel choke. Or not choke, it's not, because choke is a specific thing. It's probably a fuel cutoff. Oh, that's right, that's what it's called. It's a, yeah, it's, it's so, a normal generator like this. Uh, let's see, this is, this wouldn't be similar to diesel fuel. It would be similar to gasoline, I think, the burning of uh, liquid coal. So, you wouldn't really need, well, it's kind of complicated. You do need the pump anyway, but you, you'd have a fuel cut off at any rate because you need to shut it off. And the best way to shut off this thing would be to, you know, cut the fuel. Which is, I think, how it works on cars. It's just cut the fuel and the other things. I don't think you physically stop the engine from moving. If for some reason the... Yeah. Yeah. I think... No, I'm not sure. Anyway, we're going to pull the rope. The recoil start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old war horse before settling down to a rattle. That should do it, says Kim. I uh, guess it should. We have announced ourselves, but that's just in character, really. Books. Mostly fantastic and historical fiction. Fantastic means fantasy. <laughs> and fantastic, obviously. There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner resting on piles of soft cover books. White linen and a pillow are visible under the worn out caracul br blanket. Someone has been squatting here. The lieutenant inspects the bed. The linen is fresh, recently washed. How recently? Uh, more pain threshold. Lovely. A flash of pain interrupts you, making you wince instead of letting the words out. You know, officer, he looks at you with a touch of concern. You can rest here if you feel tired. I will keep watch. You could use some rest for what's ahead. Uh, no time right now. Or no time to rest right now. Yes, any time. If you need a rest later, it's okay for, by me. You don't have to be a hero, says our esprit de corps. That's, that's what Kim is saying, in fact. No, it's I. It's fine. You see candles planted on a broken rangefinder. Books and magazines lie scattered on the floor on a makeshift cupboard. They're not particularly well organized. They're uh, on a what now? Makeshift cupboard. I think the the. The lost in, in translation effect has, 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 has kicked in strong in this episode. What is a makeshift cupboard? Sift through them. Let's go. I have no idea what that would be. Like, in any, like... Armoire? It's not an armoire. Or any... Anyway. Most are soft cover, serialized, fantastic, and detective stories from the 20s and 30s. This disparate digest includes the classic Animal Adventures... Among what is most uh, mostly commercial fiction and serialized stories, what is commercial fiction? You mean pop fiction? I think so. That must be it. Um, not pulp fiction. Pulp fiction is, I think, mostly just fiction that involves a bunch of punching. Uh, pop fiction would at least it, it's similar to pop music because. I imagine that's how it works, because uh, in Portuguese, and I have to draw from my own experience and try to figure out what's going on here. Um, in Portuguese, the way, the way we say pop music, even though we do say musica pop, which is basically the same thing, uh, you call it musica comercial, which is commercial music, which doesn't make any sense from an English perspective, but the word uh, commercial means, or has different implications in Portuguese anyway, which are... Well, you know, all music is commercial, but in Portuguese, not all mu music is commercial. Anyway, you find a, quote, magazine cathodic for electrical engineering. Then it's back to pulp. Oh, n maybe it is pulp fiction. Or maybe it's the super tra mistranslated. Maybe it was indeed supposed to be pop fiction, and then this was supposed to be pulp. And anyway, light erotica, definitely not pulp. And it, well, I... Unless it is. Isn't Pulp Fiction supposed to be punching? Because I don't know. I, I never watched the movie. I don't. I have. That's my only reference. But I know it's a style of, of movies and, and uh, books and whatnot. An international thriller about circuit benders. 
someone made themselves a home. The lieutenant, the lieutenant inspects a soft cover. So we have our conceptualization over here that we're not going to try unless we get our conceptualization pens on. So that would be the green or the teal. Okay, conceptualization plus one. Good. It means that we don't have any conceptualization minus going on. At this rate, I think most of what um, of our equipment is just going to be plus two or plus three at most. So it's not going to make a huge difference, but it might. Spread core, empathy, visual calculus. Yeah, that's it. Okay, let's give it a try. Does anything stand out as unusual? No. Not that you can tell. This is a digest of someone who's dead bored. Most of it is for entertainment purposes. Fittingly right next to the radiola on the floor. I have no idea what that is. It might be the, a nickname for a radio. Like a radio receiver or something. Nothing out of the ordinary. Maybe it's a little old-fashioned, says our conceptualization. There's a, a nude mag. More than that... You can't say. Yeah. Nude mag. We don't have nude mags anymore. It's old fashioned. A moth bitten bed sheet keeps the wind out. Dishes stained with sauce and fire. A survivor's kitchen. That is a thing to stain dishes with. And we have ourselves a hand eye coordination shirt, a fallen arrower shirt. Nice stuff. What is it? Let's learn about it. The fallen training shirt has seen one wash too many. It retains its unusual design. One sleeve short, the other long, but little of its original colors. A giant F swooshes across its, she its chest, now in gray. It was always in gray. There's no such thing as black. It's always just darker shades of gray. Unless you're talking about things like... Uh, what? What's that? What? Ve that per black 2.0 thing and the, the, the super black uh, colors. What are they called? Verna black? Well, it's, it's, it's like a whole thing. So it's something that you, when you paint items with it, you like for example, these boots are black, but bits of it are not. You can see shades. So if it were, if it did indeed absorb all light, which is what black means, then you wouldn't be able to see the shades, and you wouldn't be able to see the shape, the shape of of the of the thing. Uh, and that's why it's not black. It's just you know dark shade of gray, even though we agree to call it black because it's yeah, reasonably dark, but still, an army surplus winter scarf. That is a tremendous amount of empathy there. A lot better than our Inland Empire. Mm. Nah, I'm gonna go with my Inland Empire over here. Plight of the Underclass, plus two. This now t toey old scarf itches when wrapped around the neck. It has, quote, humanitarian aid, unquote, written all over it, although I imagine it doesn't. Even though it says it has. Y yet you know that thousands all over the Isla are suffering the same fate as you. The fate of uncomf uncomfortable army surplus scarves. Scarves are like, why would you... Why would you not make a scarf out of anything else? Literally, scarves are the easiest thing to make a thing out of. Got a plus one morale healing thing. Good stuff. Seriously, like you just rip any tissue whatsoever you make a scarf out of it. This great blast door must weigh over 10 tons. Rust peels off it. Can I go anywhere else? Yes, I can. It's a good thing I did as well. What do we have over here? It's a control panel. It's a Feld, quote, insular, unquote, console. Green paint flakes off... No, re uh, yes. Green paint flakes off the monoblock aluminum, uh, aluminum cabinet. Cabinet. There are rows of switches on the front panel, a frequency band, and even a keyboard. It, yes. Uh, do you mean like a computer keyboard or a board that has keys? Because that's what a keyboard is. Uh, I'm going to run my fingers across that keyboard. The keys rattle like teeth. The, th this keyboard hasn't been functional in decades. What's this then? The console of an antique com computation device. The lieutenant points to the wires running into the machine. The generator upstairs with the wires coming out. They terminate here. Could this open the blast door? I think yes. 
Let's see. He points... <laughs> shouldn't he say, I think so? I think this is not incorrect to say, but it's funny. He points to the emergency dial switch. That one. The emergency open. The emergency open. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears and then widens as the light shines in. I don't think the fireman is down there. After you, Lieutenant gestures at the opening. What's there? I don't know. What if we get into another fight? Don't worry. He takes out his sidearm, checks the barrel, then holsters it again. I have a gun. I don't have a gun. Extra good, what then I do? <laughs> Indeed, Kim. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, this goes places, though. This hatch is jammed shut. Water rushes below, far below, or far down below. Uh, okay, let's not go there right now. He was specifically talking about a gun and uh, maybe us having to shoot people. I would rather not, maybe, perhaps. Um, the thing is, we saw this exit when we were up there. Hey, I can't see that now. A firing slit, you can't see inside. Hey, well, I wanted to go over there, maybe we can. Maybe it's, uh, we need to go around. What do we have over here? It must have been a direct hit to take out such a huge chunk. Uh, yeah, most likely. Look at that, we got tank thingies. Li uh, what are they called? Lion teeth, maybe, potentially. Although they could be for other things other than tanks. The winch is broken. Rust has eaten what remains of the chain. The depot that supplied this chain is long gone from the coast. He's gone from the coast? What the heck does it mean to be gone from the coast? I, I, all we know is that it is. Kim. The inside of the fortress. You make out the console and the blast door. Yay! Uh... This might be where... Okay, yeah, this might be the crime scene. I mean, the where uh, the mercenary was shot from. A weathered artillery map showing coordinates in the Bay of Revachol. An old medicine cabinet nearly stocked with druamine. Really? Give it. It also has... Yep, yeah, that's druamine. Which is probably important, because I need it. Uh, and this is a L uh, uh, LUM fuel canister. And it's an actual item. I don't think I had the... I had anything to to fuel the generator with. There's still some fuel in this battered canister. A liter or two. The metal looks decades old. The logo of the automotive manufacturer LUM has faded on the side. That is a very 60s, or at least USSR style name for a brand. There's a rain-soaked mattress on a concrete slab, only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures, firing slits like two eyes in the wall. This looks like a good place to aim from. The lieutenant looks around. He steps closer with his hand on his gun. A single person mattress. Modern civilian use. Brand name Marjorie. There's a fuel stain on the cover along with, a cig with cigarette burns and an empty can of beans on the ground next to it filled to the brim with cigarette butts. Why would I pick one out of the can? Let's do that, because of investigation. The silhouette of a tobacco picker adorns the paper filter. The brand, Teotmotiri. I saw the same brand of cigarettes extinguished in Land's End. Could be a coincidence, or the same person has visited Land's End, and he looks around here. I didn't see any signs of smoking inside, though. If people leave there, they, kept, they keep it tidy. This here may also be a, a smoking spot. There's, fi there's a firing slit on the wall in front of you, like a, a little window. Quite old concrete and grimy from years without cleaning by anything other than the rain. Look, let's look through the hole in the concrete then. 
The springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Trepidation, a tingling feeling in your stomach. A s well, there we go. A, a small piece of the Martinez coastline opens up in the, in the square in front of you, like a tiny landscape painting, one kilo a kilometer across the water. The ruins look familiar. On the left, a towering skyscraper, its top floor its top floor shaved off by artillery strike. Cape Side Apartments, Rue de Saint Guillaume, 33A and 33B. On the right, the red chimney and collapsed back of the four story tenement in front of the whirling in rags. Rue de Saint Guillaume, 10, the doomed commercial area. And between the two, the box shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags. You see a small fleck of white on the rooftop. The upstairs window of Klaji's room in the snow, reflecting the light. Motherfucker. What does that mean? Do you have line of sight to the window? More than that, says our perception. We're on a challenging success. Um... Kim, with a pair of binoculars, I would be able to see inside the room. A pair of binoculars... Or a scope of a rifle? He points to the makeshift bed. You'd be prone, lying on the mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. Cheek against the cheek rest, hand on the hair trigger. On a calm day like this. Well, it, now it's calm, a little bit. Kim, I could make it. I could make the shot. Good. He pats you on the back. Three small pats in a row. I think we have it, Detective... The origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. Affirmative, says our visual calculus. Why didn't we come here before? Why? We don't go everywhere in a thousand meter radius of the crime scene. That's not procedure. Six people are dead. Don't beat yourself up, officer. We did not put guns in their hands or get them drunk. The lieutenant pauses. Regrets. Regret comes over him. He looks north over the fortification and then adds we will make we will make up for it here i feel it could the shooter still be here where he looks behind his his back on this island he does not answer just nods with his back hunched he looks around once more and says we should move now um we gained a bunch of experience so we have two level ups ready to go Rest in the flak tower is an actual objective. Your damaged physique has earned its rest, no matter what thoughts and dreams it may bring. The thing is, I do think we should rest. Oh! You feel eyes on your back. Someone's watching, but you can't say where. The thing is, as I was going to say, resting is not going to be a tremendous problem, because we're in a position where... The reeds sway strangely. No, it's nothing. Hmm. And our, um... Our first dialogue there was a purple one, which might have been in the in Land Empire. And the reeds were uh, a yellow one, which is probably perception. But the thing is, the place we sleep at is a way out. So if there's anybody down there... Oh, there's, there might be people over here as well. But if there's anybody down there... Oh, no, the, over there is the way back. Yeah, yeah. Um, then I think we're going to be fine. Oh, maybe I can try to figure this out again. No. Conceptualization. I could bring it up, I suppose. But let's not bother with that for the moment. I'd have to save scum, most likely. The greasy old spring mattress lies in the corner. Fresh linen under the heavy catacol cover. Maybe a little shut-eye. Just an hour. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there, in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there, and then curl up with your knees close to your chest. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does, concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe. The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close. Until... Period. Uh, ellipses have three dots, though. Until you feel yourself standing up in the darkness, 
Right next to the mattress, slowly the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. Maybe I should have gone down. No, I'm good. Maybe. Where's Kim? The lieutenant is no longer here. Go outside to the beach. Oh, that's... Oh, okay, screw you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going down there. Yep. So that thing being closed, I think I think the sleeping is the way to move forward. Um, but my thoughts were that I would uh, sleep s before going down there. I think that this is not going to give us anything. However, uh, it's not going to give us anything in the next episode. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.